house tonight. Shake the good privilege of the Lord's bless this week. We'll come place of worship. Just glad for His goodness and grace on me. Passing by my way one day. Amen. I'm deserving. I got what I deserve. I know I'd be in hate. Yeah. Have mercy on me, right. save me by His grace. Bless you, Lord. Appreciate the goodness of the Lord. You pray for us. The Lord will just help us. We want to be a help, be a blessing. You just pray for us. How I came to love those men brought this to me. A great surprise.
Once my soul was astray from the heavens, I was wretched and bound as could be. Sweet journey. Went home pretty soon with the Lord. Leave all the cares and all the heartaches and all the problems this old world is leaving behind. He'll be at the Lord. I'm glad for the goodness of God. Come on, David, and preach to us. That's your heart. Appreciate you, brother. That's your heart. done in these days of meeting. Uh, thank God for His presence. He's been here seem like every night. He's come to our hearts. He's a good response to God's Word. Thank God for that. I believe uh, we can still have uh, revival in this day. I believe we can still live and operate in the power of God and the presence of God. Uh, if 
we want it, I believe it's still available. God's not changed one bit. It's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. All right. I'm glad for that. I'm coming with a needy heart tonight, needing the Lord to move. Help us again. I want to thank you for, your, uh, for the good privilege to be with you all the kind words and prayers this week. I want to thank you for that. Uh, the, one, one man even brought us a chocolate cake. It's very good. Appreciate that. It's all the goodness you've shown me and my wife, I want to thank you for. Uh, thank you, Brother Harold, for the good invitation to be here. Genesis chapter 25, we do desire your prayers tonight that God would help us. Bless you, Lord. And I believe the ones that are here, I believe we're wanting something. We didn't come just to come. I believe we want something. Brother Harold was talking. It's amazing how just a little bit of moving God to do a lot of people. We get satisfied with the house. And, but I'm glad we're here. I'm not going to concentrate on the ones that are not here. I don't know. But I'm glad we're here. If God shows us an easy, then that's all that matters tonight. Uh, that's all we need to be concerned with. Genesis chapter 25. We're going to start reading verse number 7. Read a few verses here. Try to uh, bring the message to the Lord. I feel it's laid on our heart for this service. The Bible says, And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life which he lived. Hundred three score and fifteen years. And Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age. An old man, full of years, was gathered to his people. And his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah, in the field of Ephron, uh, uh, the son of Zohar, the Hittite, which is before Mamre. The field which Abraham purchased of the sons of Heth. There was Abraham buried and Sarah his wife. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac. And Isaac dwelt by the well, the high road. Father, as we come to you again, we thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. And we do thank you, God, for your goodness and mercy. Lord, we do realize, Lord, it is in you we have our hope tonight and not in ourselves or our ability. Lord, we're not good enough to do anything tonight that will help anybody. Lord, we're not sufficient for the need of the hour. And God, we certainly acknowledge, Lord, if you don't move, it will all be as a sound and brass and a tinkling cymbal. And I thank you, Lord, for the singing of the songs of Zion. And I thank you, Lord, for helping us thus far in the meeting. And God, we do believe you'll help us tonight, oh God, if it's your will. I Lord, that you'd get glory for everything that's said or done. Lord, that you'd preach the through us, God, if it's your good pleasure, and that you'd give us that holy anointing and unction, and that only comes from you. And God, take us and do with us what you will, and help us tonight, God, if you so please and choose. And God, whatever you're I'm pleased with to do, we'll thank you for. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 As we read these verses in Genesis chapter number 25, and we come to the place where Abraham has died and gone on. Uh, he's gathered unto his people. The Bible says he uh, died and had a good old age, if you will, had many years, had a good life, and uh, no doubt uh, went to be with the Lord. And as we read these things, we come down to these verses where Isaac and Ishmael take him and bury him, and he's laid with uh, Sarah there in the grave. And after this, in verse 11, we'll take our text. The Bible says, And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac, and Isaac dwelt by the way. Isaac dwelt by the way. I want to preach tonight on a simple thought on I'm going to dwell by the way. I'm going to dwell by the way. Now the well here is a center point of any town any family, any people in the old days, the well is what you built the town around. Uh, the source of water is what you lived around. Uh, the family had access to that well. And the well we think about, and we know that Abraham here is associated with altars and, and Jacob we 
satisfaction in this day. There's a lot of people going to the bars and looking uh, for something to satisfy their soul. Uh, there's a lot of uh, people walking the streets tonight in towns and cities uh, trying to find something to satisfy them. A lot of people are joining up with churches and getting baptized and getting real religious uh, trying to get some satisfaction. Uh, you know Chapter 4, Jesus is getting ready to go from Judea to Galilee and said he must needs go through Samaria. Right. You know the story. He goes up to the well there. The woman's at the well. As she comes out, he asks her for a drink of water. And uh, he says, she said, uh, me being a, a Samaritan and you being a Jew, why are you going to ask me for a drink of water? You don't have any dealings with us. And he said, if you knew who it was that was talking to you, you would have asked me for what I have, for the water that I have. You see, if you ever drink of this well that you're drinking from, you're going to thirst again. You're going to have to come back again. You're going to have to drink again. And you're going to leave and pretty soon be thirsty again. But if you ever drink the water that I've got, hey, you shall never thirst. I bet he said it'll satisfy your soul. You know what will satisfy folks? Have just a good dose and a good drink of that little water God offers. We spend time trying to rehabilitate them. We spend time trying to dress them right and make them look right and make them look like Christians and act like Christians and when we need to just try to get them to the watering hole where God's a watering and if they ever get a drink of that living water and you won't have to try to dress them right. You won't have to tell them uh, you won't have to tell them to put some clothes on and take the earrings out of their ear and they cut their hair and look like somebody. You won't have to do that. Whenever they get a hold of God God gets a hold of them went on around here this week has satisfied my soul. Amen. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm enjoying God helping my heart this week and it satisfied my soul. You know there's uh, nobody or nothing or nothing I've ever found in this world that satisfies me like He does. And you know what? I'm not looking for anything else. I'm happy with Him. But it satisfies the soul. I want to say, secondly, not only is satisfied, I want to say there's substance about this way. That's right. I mean, there's something about this way. It's important. You can go a little while without food, but you're going to have to drink water. You can't go very long without drinking. I remember back in school, I played sports, and one of the sports I played was wrestling, and you had to watch your weight. And you couldn't wait over a certain amount. And we'd go, and man, I mean, it's dangerous. We'd starve, and we'd go about drinking water until after weigh-in. I remember eating candy and spit and trying to lose water weight and dehydrating myself to try to make the weigh-in. And I remember how thirsty I'd get at night. I'd get up, and I'd go to the bathroom, and I'd, I'd get some water in my hand and put it in my mouth and swish it around, knowing I couldn't swallow it and spit it out go back to bed. I was so thirsty. I mean, it's important. A body longs for water. A body has to have water. And you know, if you've ever been saved, there's a longing in you. I mean, you just can't go very long without getting around where God's at. I mean, hey, you might be saving on your way to heaven, but there's something more to it than that. I believe we know that by this week and what we've heard and what God said. I believe we know we've got to have a move of God in this day. That's right. It's important. Amen. We know the Lord was over there. Yes. And Martha came up to him and said, I, I, I'm over here serving. Mary, here to help me. Don't you care, Jesus? Aren't you going to be in her to come help me serve? Will you, come, will you tell her to come serve? He said, Martha, Martha. Well, you're troubled by many things. But he said, Mary, I've chosen that good part. That's right. Oh, yeah. There is one thing. She's chosen that one thing yeah. that's important. That good part. Where was Mary at? She was at the feet of Jesus, uh, learning of Him, hearing what He had to say. I mean, sure, dinner had to be made. And sure, it had to be served. But there's just some things more important. Hey, I'm telling you, I know the choir's got to sing. I know things have to take place at the church house. But there's something more important than the choir singing. But there's something more important than Sunday school going.
I'm of the opinion if God gets to moving during Sunday school, just go ahead and worship. Yeah. Amen. If He gets to moving before Sunday school, there ain't no use to dismiss and go to class. That's what you're there for. Just go ahead and worship. Amen. That's how I feel about it. I mean, we don't need all the thrills and frills that come along with church in this day. We don't. We don't need all the puppet shows and all that. Well, we just don't need all that. We, you know what's important? All oh, that's just sideline stuff is what that is. That's just distractions uh, to get us uh, our eyes on what's important. There is one thing important about church. It's getting to the water. It's getting to where God's at. It's getting help. It's getting help for your family and my family. It's moving up closer to God. It's worshiping. I mean, hey, the move of God's the most important thing in the church house. You read that the church in, that are written to in the book of the Revelation, that first church, I believe, Ephesus, it was written to, the Lord's walking in the midst. Right. The last church it was written to, the church of the Sin, he's on out, outside and knocking on the door. Yeah. Yeah. Won't he? Yeah. Amazing yeah. how it went from him walking in the midst to him being there knocking on the door and wanting to come right. in. Right. That's the day and age we live in. Oh, yes. I want to say this way it was sustaining in the house. Yes. It was. Uh, process that he had to have to go back to. And I sort of think about my Bible. Well, I'm glad I've got my Bible I can go to. Yeah. I can draw Amen. some things from that sustain me. Yeah. I'm glad I've got my prayer clause that Amen. I can go to. I hope you have a prayer clause that you yeah. go to. I hope you've got a place you go to. It's more than just bowing your head, open your meal, and saying the blessing. It's more than laying flat in your back in bed, trying to pray a little bit, go to sleep. Hey, it is a active movement towards God, going to the prayer clause and shutting the door and getting a hold of God that sustains you and I. It's going back to the well. It's getting that drink again. It's fellowshipping with God. It's sustaining if you get around. I'm going to give you a couple more things and I'm done with that. And I'm just trying to more or less encourage you to stay around the way. Amen. Now, Amen, Isaac come to the point where he got up and left like I wrote one day. Went down to Gerar, uh, Gerar or how you pronounce that. He was headed down towards Egypt and God stopped him. Wouldn't let him go. Chapter 26, over there, for verses around 17, 18, 19, somewhere around in there. He goes, and the Bible says he comes up to this place and he digs again the wells of his father. And when he dug them again, the Philistines would throw trash in them. Why didn't he dig new wells? It's because the old ones would still get the job done. The water in the bottom of the old wells is still good. There's just trash in between it and that. And he dug them again. And called him by the same name that Abraham had called him by. You know what we need to do in 2014? Just redig the way. We don't need a new. We don't need a new Bible. And I, I, I don't think I know for a fact we don't need a new style of singing. Amen. We don't need to have contemporary worship service and traditional service and try to cater to both crowds. That's right. Why? Because the old well will still get the job done. That new well, I'm telling you, it ain't what it's cranked up to be. It'll never satisfy you. It'll never sustain you. Hey, there's no substance about it. It's not important. It's just a sideline show of bells and whistles and flashing lights. But them old wells will still get the job done. It amazes me. That old hymn book I was looking again tonight when we were singing. There's some of them songs written at the turn of the century before. But yet God still honors them. God still blesses them. I don't think we need to look for no new, uh, uh, new music and new ways. I just get back to the old stuff. That things the young ones here. Let them come up. The way it still works in this day. We've got away from them old hymn books. Well, Rage, I was thinking the other night when they sing, I, I wish they'd sing, that nothing but the blood. We got up, guess what they sung? Nothing but the blood. We fellowship and shook hands, and I sure was glad to hear. For some reason, that song was on my heart. I guess that's Wednesday night. I'm glad for them old songs. They still get the job done. And what we need to do is sing them and let our children learn them because the generation's coming up that don't even know them anymore. They want to hear what the Dove Awards are going on. They want to hear some of that. And the Christian singers in this day, what they're singing on the radio. Uh, but 
I was thinking about this, and I know I'm not hitting in high gear tonight, but I'm trying my best to just deliver what God's put on our heart. But I was thinking about this. It's amazing we hear ourselves newer songs written in, written, written in modern times. We ain't had no kind of nationwide revival in a long, long time. Right, brother. Amen. That's right. We've not had revival on a large scale in a long time in America. Right, brother. Right. But that old hymn book has songs in it that were written that come out of revival period in America's yeah, right. time. Now why would I want to go drink from any other well or look for anything else when this out the same way with reading books and studying after men that the good books you're going to find are written hundreds of years ago. They're not written nowadays. I mean, why are we going to read after preachers that's never experienced revival and don't know what it is but they're trying to tell you how to have your church, how to have revival? Hey, God, help us. Let's read about the well survival. Let's go back and read about days gone by and how God blessed years ago. Let's read when the whale was working and go back and redig that old whale. There's a vast amount of knowledge that was here and written down that's almost passed away. And we're heaping ourselves this Joel Osteen crowd and this crowd of things. They can tell you how to build a church. It's Rick Warren crowd. How to have successful life and uh, a successful Christian life. By the above, all that stuff. We don't need all that. Amen. We just need to read the old way. Amen. Amen. The old whale wasn't a popular whale. That old whale, it wasn't the one that the school kids talked about. Saw on the internet. That old well, them that drunk from it, their calendars weren't booked up all the time. Right, well. You know what? They had something them other fellas just didn't have. Right. Them old well Christians that drank from the old well, they got something that them new age Christians just don't have. Right, brother. Amen. Amen. And I, I've done that, but I thought about how he called it by the same name. There's a lot in there. It amazes me how we've renamed some things in this day. Right, and we've re, I guess if you will, uh, we've reorganized the structure of our modern day churches. Yeah. Yeah. When the Bible gives us the structure how the church is supposed to be, right. we've reorganized the family in America. Now it's all right for two daddies to call themselves daddy. Now it's all right uh, for daddy to stay home, raise the kids, and mama work and have a career. And say, man, it's all right. right. Now it's time that we, we rename what sin is. And we no longer call sin sin. It's just the modern days. Right. 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 Ain't that right? But it amazes me how God, how He didn't have an expiration date on the Word of God when He called it sin. And I don't believe you and I should as God's people. It doesn't matter what society says. If they say by and large, think it's all right, is that going to make it all right? If they say smoking dope is all right, is that going to make it all right? If they say drinking's all right, is that going to make it all right? It had not changed God's opinion and what He said in it. Amen. Called it by the same name. That's what we ought to do. And I know, I know in the day we live, they say you've got to be uh, politically correct and you're going to offend this crowd over here and you're going to upset this crowd over here. But I wonder if God knew all that when He wrote it down and sent it to us or if it's catching them off guard. I wonder if He needs to revise something and give us an updated version there. Or can we just call it the same name and say wickedness is just wickedness? I mean, they can call it the uh, cohabitating if they want to, but shacking up just living in sin. Amen. 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 That's exactly right. And it's amazing to me in these days, they, uh, when I was growing up in years ago, you dated and courted a while, and then you got engaged, and then you got married, and then you had kids after that. Uh, but it's all backwards nowadays. They try it out for a little bit, and then they have kids, and uh, then they live together a little while. If they want to get married, they do it. If they don't, they don't. Yet we bring them down to the church house, put them in the office, and tell them it's okay. And dare anybody to say anything against them. That's right. That's right. But if we're calling it by the same name, sin is still sin. Amen. Amen. And I, I don't know how it is everywhere, but I know this, and it does happen in good churches. 
I'm not going to act like it don't. It happens in good families. It just happens. That's right. It's everywhere. But I, you're looking at one preacher, so I'm going to pat them on the back and tell them I'm happy they're pregnant. Hey, I hope everything's all right. hope the baby's okay, but I'm not going to have them a baby share at the church. Hello, y'all still in here. We still call it by the same name. Why, why, why don't you want to do that, preacher? It's because all them other little girls in the church are looking at that. They must say, well, the church don't see anything wrong with it. There must not be anything wrong with it. And then they that. You know what? It ain't going to stop them from doing the same thing. When the preacher pats her on the back and says, I sure am happy for you. What message does that send to the church? hard line to stand on what you're asked to have a heart of compassion and love them. Yeah. Now, I, I will tell you, I ain't going to tell them to go home yeah. and not come to church for nothing. They're welcome at the house of God. They're welcome to hear this way. Hey, yeah, you know what? I'm hoping they'll get a drink of that living water and life will change for them. And I know things happen to good uh, Christian folk to them. They mess up. Uh, but I hope they see the air of they were their way. Uh, they repent, get right with God, uh, and ask the church to forgive them. And you welcome them back in, shake their hand, love on them, try to help them what you can. But you don't praise their sin, exalt it, and say it's all right in front of everybody. Hard life of sin right there and trying to do right. Yes, just call it by the same name. I like plain talk, don't you? Because yes. yes. I'm simple minded, that makes it easy to understood. Yes. Right, I've not got to wonder about it. Right. And I and I, I know there's some things that are going to cost us some members and some family and some friends. I know there's things that's going to happen. My brother don't see eye to eye on me with everything. And me and him a lot torn over and over about stuff. My wife's family don't see eye to eye with us on everything. And we've walked towards, but we've drawn the line and said this is how it's going to be. If you come stay with us and you're not married, you're not going to sleep in the same bed. You're not going to pile up and shack up at our house. Now, yeah, but we've lived together for years. It don't matter. It's not going to happen at my house. There's going to be some standards at my house. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say this and I'm done today. Uh, in this day, when somebody draws a hard line and takes a stand, a lot of times they're standing by their self. Yes. I was talking to one of my deacons the other day and he said, uh, we was talking about church discipline and people that, uh, you know, cause trouble in church and do this and that. And I said, yeah. I said, used to. The pastor would stand up and take care of that. The church would back that man of God. And people knew better than to cause trouble and discord and so and do all that at the church. They knew better. I said, and I told my deacon, I said, you know what? Nowadays, if you've got a man of God that's even got a backbone enough to do it, don't worry about his paycheck. He, he most likely ain't got a crowd that's going to back him up. But what's going to happen is that crowd that he's talking against, they're taking a stand against, it's going to get mad, and their family's going to get mad, and their in-laws are going to get mad, and their friends are going to get mad, and pretty soon the preacher's going to get voted out. Yeah. Right. I'm going to tell you something. It's easy for that man not to say anything than it is to say something in itself. And as far as dealing with it between him and God, that's, you know, that ain't easy when you don't do what God wants you to do. But for him to get up and preach a message he knows is going to hurt somebody, for him to preach a message and take a stand on something that's right, he ought to have a crowd that loves God enough and loves God's man enough to back him up no matter what it costs. Amen. That's right. Amen. We got enough in it for profession. We got enough in it just to be doing something. Boy, don't we just need to call it by the same name? Great right. the same one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it'll cost us a few things, but more the benefits are out of this world. Yeah. I heard one one day, and I, I, I've done, I heard about a marital problem in this family. The older couple, they've been married a pretty good while. They had a daughter. They had a baby at a wedlock. And that daddy uh, wanted to try to take a stand, not against his daughter, but stand on what's right and say, this ain't right. And she's still going around, sleeping around, doing stuff, and he's going to say, this ain't right. And that mama stood in that daddy's face and said, if you do that, she takes that baby and leaves this house, I will leave you too. I'm going to that church for That's the day we live in. Right, right, brother. That's
that's the day we live in. How do I ever never get to that spot, preacher? Just never quit drinking from the well. Never quit calling sin, sin, the wrong, wrong, right, right. right. Yeah. Never compromise like we preached last night. Just do what's right. Yeah. It's a lot easier just to do what's right and trust God than it is to do uh, than to compromise and back up. Because right. if you back up a little bit, you'll end up backing up a little bit more yeah. and a little bit more and a little bit more. Yeah. And I know doing what's right ain't always fun, but guess what? It is always right. I appreciate you putting up with us tonight. If I can encourage you any bit tonight, and I know tonight's been different, but if I can encourage you any bit, it's just to keep drinking at the well. Amen. It's just to keep going back and going back. Stick with your church. Stick with your pastor. Amen. Stick with God, His Word. This whole time late. And by the way, we ain't seen it all. Keep pulling up more towards it. Keep looking for things in the way of you clean out. Yes. Right. Amen. Right, brother. Do what God had you to do. Father, as we come to you again, I thank you all for being with us tonight. Thank you for your goodness and mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness. God, I pray that you'd take, Lord, a feeble attempt tonight to do your will. And you'd let your word find lodging place in folks' heart. God, I pray you would ever help us. Help us, oh Lord, in these days. Yes, Lord. Lord, to keep pulling up to the well, keep drawing, to keep yes. doing what you'd have us to. Help us keep the, keep the well cleaned out. Yes. God, give us grace for those hard things we're yes. going to have to face. Lord, it's not going to get any easier in the days to come. Oh. But Lord, I know that more sin is going to enter into the church, more of the world is going to infiltrate. The enemy's going to, Lord, have more of his people in here trying to ruin us and cause trouble. But God, may we stand, Lord, on what's right. Stay in love with you. Keep our eyes on you. Follow your man. Lord, and keep drinking from the well. Yes, Thank you for all you've done for us in these days. Have your way, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You come on, brother. Amen. I appreciate the message tonight. Never message this week. I'm glad for the whale tonight. And I'm, I agree with the brother. Stay with the whale. Stay with the